shop was closed, all the houses were locked, there was nobody there. And I stood there with my bag stranded in uniform, not knowing where to go to, what to do next. As I was doing that, there is a mama who was a neighbor, she looked at me, and I saw her shed tears. Then she calls me and tells me, son, come I tell you. I went to that home. She gave me a cup of uji. I took the uji, then she tells me, your mother is not here. Your mother has been in hospital for the last one week. That is what I meet at home. When I'm so excited, I want to explain, I want to give stories to my mother how the time has been. I want to tell her how I've been sick, how I have struggled, how I missed her, how I wished she was around when I was sick. Then I come and I'm told she's in the hospital. Then at that point, this mama tells me the hospital and the hospital was far. And she never knew that I never had money. So she tells me now you can go to the hospital and see her. I walked a distance of five kilometers to the hospital. Reaching the hospital was disappointed. Because I thought I'm going to talk to her, I found I could not talk to her. I found my sisters there. I look at my sisters, they cannot talk to me, they are crying because they have lost hope and they know our mother is going. I got so disturbed. As a form three, I knew there is a God that I have been taught, the God who is a healer. And I told God, if God you are really there, heal this mama. My father passed on. And this mama, I need her even for my, my education to continue. And I prayed, I remember that day, I went and closed myself in the room and cried to God like a baby. And I told God, if there is one miracle that is left, I want it now. And I told God, if you are not healing her, I am not going back to school. And as I prayed, uh, that was at night, I prayed in the morning, I went to the hospital, and I, f I was surprised to reach in the hospital, and I found my mother seated in bed. And God healed my mama, that was in 1998. That was in 1998, until 2017, when my mother went to be with the Lord. And as she recovered, she told me, when I was sick, I, uh, when I saw you came to the hospital, I could not talk. Then she says that at, at some point I died, and I went to the Lord. And I talked to God, and God told me, He has changed your case. And that's why I'm back. And my mother assured me, that I will never die until you finish all your schooling. I was the last born. And uh, I thought it was a joke. Kumbe God was serious about it. I finished my, my, my fall fall. I went to university, finished. I came home, built for my mother a good house. And she lived well until in 2017 when she went home to be with the Lord. We are talking of a God of impossibility. We are talking of a God who gives hope where there was no hope. In the year 2008, I was posted to a school called Magena High School. And in that school, the teacher that had, that had been transferred that I came to replace was a class teacher in Form 4. So automatically I replaced him and became a class teacher in one of the Form 4 classes. And in that class, I like giving students hope. I took one hour to talk to those students and tell them, now because I've come here, there is hope. You are going to pass. Because I was first told, this is the weakest class in Form 4. I told them you are the weakest, 
but God is going to make a way. And as I was encouraging them, uh, I, I finished and walked out. Uh, I, I went to the office. I was given an office to be the careers, uh, careers master. One boy followed me to the office. And this boy told me, Mualim, you have told us big things. You have told us how we are going to pass. You have told us how our future is very bright. But I don't think my future is bright. The boy told me, Mualim, I am here because I'm repeating. I sat for my phone four and I got a seaplane and I went back to form three. I never failed in form four because I was stupid. I failed because I was sick. I asked him, what is your problem? He tells me, every time we are doing exams, I develop an epileptic attack and I get paralyzed until that exam is over. And that's when I regain every time we are doing exams. And I remember I took it lightly, I laughed when he told me that. I told him that has been happening because I was not here. But now I've come, it will not happen again. And I made another mistake. I went to class and told the students about it. I told the students, you know the case of uh, uh, this friend of ours, uh, Frederick, you know his case but it will never happen again. It has been happening because of, I was not here. Now it will not happen again. That was a few, that was in second term, before they do mock. When mock started in July, the first paper, it was English paper 101. The first paper, paper 1. Immediately the paper started, he has written his name, that epileptic attack came and they collapsed. Tell me how I felt. And I had announced to the students, I had made a mistake and announced to them that it will never happen again. I felt stupid. I felt, I, I, I felt like now this God does not want to cooperate with me. I, we carried the boy we tried all ways possible to resuscitate him, but we could not. And the teacher said, this boy, every time it's like this, he must go to the hospital. Until he is given treatment, he doesn't recover. I tried to pray all the prayers. It could not work. So I gave in. We put him in one of the teacher's cars to take him to to take him home because his home was nearby the school so that from home they could take him to hospital. And about two kilometers from home the boy regained consciousness. And he told us, where are you taking me? We told him, Frederick, we are taking you home. He told me, he told me teacher, don't take me home. Take me to my aunt's place and we never understood why so we took him to the aunt's place and when we reached there the aunt told us it's good you never brought him here it's good you brought him here you never took him home because at home his brother who is in class 8 was also brought home yesterday with the same condition and I asked her what do you think is the problem she said the problem there are witches in, the, in that place and they are terrorizing all of them even the young girl who is in class 3 has the same problem she has never done any exam every time and it always happens when exams are going on if it's a disease called epilepsy epilepsy comes in time it doesn't wait for exams but this thing that waits for the time of exams that's a demon and then I knew now this is an easy case. I have known this is not a disease. These are demons that I'm fighting with. I went and fasted and told God, you have brought me to this place where people don't know God. And you have brought me as your servant. If you don't heal this boy, then take, away from this, take me away from this place to another school. And I prayed and God spoke to me clearly and told me one thing that go and lead that boy to Jesus. 
then his problems will be over. Uh, the boy came back to school after mock. He never sat for that mock. He came and I took him aside and uh, I tried to talk to him. My brother, are you born again? He tells me, yes, I'm baptized. That's how most of you answer. Are you born again? Yes, I'm baptized. I'm asking, are you born again? Yes, I go to church on the Sabbath. I told him, your problem is bigger than the Sabbath could solve. Your problem is bigger than baptism can solve. I told him, you need Jesus. And I told him, God has told me that you accept Jesus and all these other issues will dissolve away. There is hope for a tree that has been cut. The boy accepted the drink from the living water. I led him to Christ. And I told him, now from today you are my friend. Every morning when you see me uh, before classes begin, come to my office, we pray together before you go to class. And the boy was very bright. He never sat for his mock. So we even never knew his potential because he has never sat an exam and completed the whole exam. Do you know, as we prayed like that, as a joke, I now never mentioned it before students, but I was sure God has done it. KCS came and everybody, including the mother. Imagine the mother came to school the, the day KCS is beginning. She never came to wish him well. She came so that she can carry him home when he collapses. I told the mother, you are not carrying him home today until he finishes his case he will finish his case and the boy did his case finished everything that year the boy was number two in the school with a minus as we talk the boy is uh, as graduated as an engineer a mechanical engineer from the university of nairobi children of god there is hope for a tree that has been cut. There are some of us here who have been terrorized by witches. We have been terrorized by demons. I'm talking to people here who even fear going home because when you go home there is no peace. I was preaching in some school and the girls were telling me at night they fear because at night they fight, they see people walking in the streets, uh, in the corridors of the dorm. I was asking them, are you sure you are not dreaming? They told me we see them walking. You are living a life of fear. And you think nothing good will come out of it. And when you sleep, you want to sleep, you don't even want to go to the dormitory because you begin having nightmares, you begin having bad dreams, and you are scared. There are people here under the threat of death. You fear death, you think death is following you. And you can feel it, that death is after you. Children of God, there is a time you understand. When death is following you, you will feel it. The Bible says in, uh, in Psalms that the, the course of death entangled me. I was swallowed. That's David who is saying that. There is a time I also felt like that. I told you in Form 3 I was sick. And I thank God for one man of God. He was a husband to one of the ladies who was our CEO patron. He prayed with me. I could dream. I could, as I begin, I, I begin sleeping like this, I see myself in a coffin. Several, even three times in a single night, I knew I was dying. As I was dying in school, my mother was dying at home. And I lost hope. But I thank God for that man of God who held me my hand and prayed with me and told me one day 
I saw myself in a coffin, but the coffin was smaller than my body. I could not fit in that coffin. And that's after the man of God had prayed for me. And when I went to him, I explained to him today I was in a coffin, but the coffin was smaller. The man of God told me, God has answered our prayer. He has basically said, that coffin is not yours. You are bigger than that coffin. And you will never be fitted in that coffin. And God delivered me fully. I was living a life of fear. We are in a place, people are discussing, people are laughing, and I have no reason to laugh. Because I know my life is under threat. I'm talking to someone here, you have totally lost hope. You have given up totally in life. You don't even see the need of struggling in class because according to you there is no life ahead of you. There is a condition that you are going through, it can be a disease. And you think your case is closed. Lazarus' case was closed. But Jesus comes and says, Lazarus, come out. And Jesus is here this morning, calling you, young girl, come out. I am here today so that you drink from this water, so that the, risk, the tree can begin sprouting again. The tree that people thought had been cut and has rotten, the stumps are rotten. The tree will begin growing again. And that's the Jesus that we are serving. That we can still be friends of Jesus like Lazarus. Even friends of Jesus become sick. Even friends of Jesus become sick and they die of that disease. But they don't die a hopeless death like people who don't know Jesus. That's why young girl, we are talking to you today. That we have no other hope to give you except Jesus Christ. We are giving you Jesus because he has changed our story. We are giving you Jesus because the same Jesus has done it for us. And we are witnesses of Jesus Christ that he is able to do it for you. Acts 3.32 Jesus Christ of whom we are all witnesses. We are witnesses of the healing of Jesus Christ. We are not telling you just fables. We are not telling you stories. We are telling you testimonies about what Jesus can do. And the same Jesus is here this morning. He wants to do it in your life. He wants to change your story. Some of us, you look at the families that we come from. And we know there is no hope in that family. Everybody is a failure, so you have automatically written yourself that you are a failure. The fact that your brothers and sisters have failed doesn't mean that you are also going to fail. The difference is that you can also have Jesus, and Jesus is going to change your story. Somebody, I'm making an invitation this morning. To somebody who wants to rewrite our story by bringing Jesus to be part of our story. So that one day you will stand and say, indeed Jesus has changed my life. That this Jesus has turned my story round. This Jesus has taken me away from the cause of death. The devil wanted to finish me. Child of God. The devil has no good intention about your life. The devil is aware of your future. That's why he wants to destroy it. The devil is aware of where you are going. That's why he wants to destroy it. Want to pray with somebody here this morning. You are saying, I need Jesus in my life. I have tried all other ways. I have tried my best. I have even sought hope from where there was no hope. But I have not found any. But I have learned today. I have heard today that there is a Jesus who gives hope. And you are the same Jesus to give.
give hope in your life. Somebody rise up where you are. Want to pray with somebody. Let's all rise up. Child of God, this life we cannot make it without Jesus. Child of God, this journey of life is so unpredictable that we don't know what the future has in store for us. But we can hold on to our hands, our future in His hands. And I'm making an invitation this morning. You may be there and you want to surrender your life to Jesus Christ. Want to pray with somebody this morning. The, the, the greatest miracle that Jesus can give you today. You know, we'll pray for you, you are sick, and you will still die. One day you will still die. But when we pray for you about salvation, we are, you are assured of life eternal. You are assured of life after death. You are assured that you are going to be an engineer who has hope. If you are there, you want to receive Jesus Christ. You raise up your hand, I want to pray for you. You are there, you say, be sweet Jesus. I'm inviting him to be part of my story. Just raise up your hand, I want to pray for you. Thank you for those hands. You can take another step and move forward as we pray for you. The servants of God are here to pray for you. You can take another step and come forward so that we pray together. You want to surrender your life to Jesus Christ. Make a bold step. It is your life. It is your life. You are not doing it for anybody. You are doing it for yourself. You are doing it for yourself. Those whose hands are raised up, just move forward. We want to pray for you. Jesus is here. Just run here. Jesus is here. Want to salvage somebody from the cross of the devil. People waiting to see who is coming before they come. My sister, it is your life. It is your life. It is your life. The people who are in that funeral never knew the pain of losing a loved one. It is not that Mary who knew that we have lost our brother. Just come forward. Just come forward. Come running. Come running. You are there, you are saying, I want to surrender my life to Jesus Christ. If this Jesus can give me hope, if this Jesus can make the tree to begin budding again, then I want this Jesus. If this Jesus can change the story of my hope, if this Jesus can rewrite my story, then I need him today. You have come forward, just raise up your hand and speak to Jesus. Take time, open your mouth and speak to Jesus. The Bible says when, blind, when Jesus was passing, blind man Myers made a lot of noise. People tried to tell him to be quiet, but it's blind Myers who knew what he had been through. It is bad miles who knew that I have never seen the sun. I have heard people talk about good cars. I have never seen a car. It is bad miles who knew that I don't have sight. These other people are telling me to be quiet. They have eyes. They are seeing every other thing. But for me, I have never seen anything. Child of God, it's your life. Uh, raise up your hand and cry to Jesus. Tell Jesus forgive my sins. Change my story. Change my story. You have heard this is the Jesus who gives hope. Some people hope in politicians. Some have put their hope in their governor. Some have put their hope in their MPs. But those MPs are human beings and they die. But we have a Jesus who never dies. We have a Jesus who will give us hope.